Hello, everyone, and welcome to lesson 5-5, part 2 of Rational Exponents and Radicals. Today, um, in this lesson, we are going to just add one additional factor to lesson 5-5, and that is we are including variables in our problems and in our answers. Okay, so I have a um, practice problem to get us started with as we go through each step. Um, the first step is to factor out all or factor out the 32 x to the fourth using a factor tree. And so I'm going to show my work down here. And so the first thing I'm going to start with is my 32. Okay, so we have four times eight, two times two, two times four, and two times two. So here is my factor tree. And I am going to use my radical symbol and put everything under here. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, so I factored out my 32. The next thing I'm going to do is factor out my x to the fourth. And all that you're doing with x to the fourth is x times x times x times x. So I just include that in here. So this right here was step number one. All right, under the radical symbol, write out all your prime factors. So we did that. And then we're gonna circle groups of three. So here we go. Circling my groups of three, I have one group of three twos. And then these two have to stay inside the radical symbol because those are left over. I don't have a third two to match it with. And then I have a group of three X's with one left over. Okay, so. Then I'm going to go to step number four. All groups of three go on the outside of the radical and all remaining terms stay inside the radical. So just like in part one of this lesson, um, except now I have an X, a variable to deal with. So I'm gonna pull a two and an X out. And that is just two times X, which is two X. And then I, inside of my radical, I have a two times a two times an X. So two times two times x. So my final answer would be two x cubed root, two times two is four, times x is x, so two, uh, four x. So our final answer, we'll go up here, two x cubed root four x. And so that's what today's lesson is going to be about. Okay, um, well, let's go ahead and look at example one. This is a very simple one. And so when I start out with this, I have y to the fourth power, which is just y times y times y times y. Okay, and I want to find groups of three. So I'm going to circle my group of three. So in this case, I'm going to pull one of the y's out because it forms a group, which totals one y, and then I'm gonna leave a y on the inside. So my answer would be y cube root of y. All right, example number two, I'm going to factor out everything within the square root symbol. So I start with my 27, I have three times nine, three times three. So inside my square root symbol, or cubed root symbol, I have three times three times three, and then we can't forget this B. There's only one of them, so I only have to put one. Okay. So I'm finding groups of three because that's my index. So I circle this group of three, so I'm gonna pull out a three from that group, but I have to leave the B inside the square root symbol because there are not, there's not a group of three Bs. So my final answer is, whoops, I forgot my three. Three cubed root of B. Okay. All right, let's move on to example three. Again, we have to factor out everything inside the square root symbol. So I'll start with 64. And I know I have eight times eight. Okay. 
so I can put that inside. I have, I'm gonna be very careful here, one, two, three, four, five, six, six twos. And then I have four A's. Okay, so I'm going to circle my groups of three. Okay, so I have two times two times A that goes on the outside of the square root symbol. Oops, that should be cubed root with an A on the inside. So now I can simplify that down to 4A. All right, moving on to example four. Example four is just a tad different because remember with order of operations, you have to solve uh, exponents first and then uh, parentheses. Uh, and so we have that here. And so what that means is that we have four cubed times x cubed. And so we can rewrite that as four cubed times x cubed. Because remember, anytime you have an exponent on the outside of the parentheses, you have to apply it to both terms within that parentheses. So now we can simplify this a little bit. We can find um, what four cubed is. So four cubed is 64. And then we still have an x cubed. So now I can go ahead and solve this like I did in my other problems. Notice here we do not have an index. So that um, signifies that it is a two. And so I'm gonna go ahead and factor out my 64. Oops. So I have six twos and three X's. So I can write this out. Oh, almost ran out of space there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle groups of two because it's a squared root. All right, I only have one term left over and that is an X. So on the outside, I will have two times two times two times X. Square root X. Okay, so we can simplify that to eight X. Whoops. Square root of X. Sorry. All right, moving on to example number five. Very similar to this one, except now we're raising it to the power of four instead of three. So. Okay, so we have 64 times four, 256. So we have 256 X to the fourth. Now at this point, some of you may be saying we really don't need to uh, simplify four to the fourth. And so I'm gonna do this problem in two ways just to show you that you don't always have to uh, solve that part of it, okay? So right now I'm going to create a factor tree for 256. So I know that we can do four. So that would go in 64 times, two, two. Okay, so I have a lot of twos here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I am going to write this down here. I know it's going to be really small, but I think that's the only way that I'm going to get have enough space. OK, 
Okay, so now I'm going to circle my groups of two. So I have a group of two, a group of two. Oh, look, everything groups up. So anytime you have all terms that group up, you're actually getting rid of your square root symbol. So I end up with two times two times two times two, which is x times x. So two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. So I have, my final answer is 16x squared, okay? So that was the long way of doing it. Let me show you the short way. And some of you will catch on to this quickly and others will think, no, I like to write everything out and that's fine. Either way works. Notice that we are finding the square root of four to the fourth. Well, if we were to write this out, we have four times four times four times four times x times x times x times x, right? Well, we can already do uh, two groups of four here. We really didn't need to factor it all the way down to prime numbers and do all that extra work, okay? So in this case, we end up with four times four times x times x, which gives us 16x squared, the same answer we had from doing it the long way. Okay, so um, I'm going to Okay, so you could do it either way. All right. So let's go to example six. With example six, you have now the cubed root of 81 squared c squared, okay? Now, 81 is a very large number. I am not going to multiply 81 times 81. So what I'm gonna do is, since we're squaring it, um, I'm going to factor out 81 one time and then double my prime numbers at the end. So if I take 81, nine and nine, three and three, three and three. So I have four threes, okay? So if I were to do this again, if I were to factor out 81 again, I would end up with eight threes. Now, if it helps to factor it out twice, you can. For some of you, this might just be too much work and that's fine too. Just know that if you're squaring 81, you have to double the threes or whatever numbers you have. If you are cubing it, you would have to triple it. So in the end, I have uh, eight threes and I have two Cs. Okay, so let's write this all out. One, two. Eight threes and two Cs. Okay. Now, because I am finding groups of three, I'm going to circle my groups of three. So I have a group of three here, a group of three here, and I don't have any other groups of three, okay? So what I would do is I would write this as three times three, square root of three times three times C times C. Now, some of you are probably thinking I'm doing too many steps, and I am just, I'm not doing too many, I'm just doing every single step so you can see the thought process behind what's going on. If you catch on a lot quicker than like a step like this, you could probably eliminate. So my final answer is going to be nine. This is a cubed root, cubed root. Cubed root of three times three is nine, C times C is C squared. And so this would be, final answer for number six. Notice the amount of work that some of this requires. Make sure that you're showing your work uh, on your homework. Okay, moving on to page two. 
We are now going to um, add one additional step, and that is we're adding coefficients to the outside of your, uh, your radical. And the only difference is that now you have to multiply that coefficient by whatever you factor out of the radical, okay? So let's look at this first example. Notice I have the exact same problem as I did on the first page. Um, the only difference is that I have added a coefficient of five. So this, the steps are the same, you just have one final step at the end. So um, I am going to um, factor out my 32. So I end up with five on the outside. And then I have uh, one, two, three, four, five twos and four X's. One, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Okay. Now, because this is cued root, I'm going to um, circle groups of three. And let, I'll show you that next step as we pull out our numbers. So I'm gonna take this five and include it on what goes on the outside of the radical symbol. So five times my one group of two times my one group of x. Oops, I put one in so x. Okay. And then on the inside of the radical, I have two times two times x. And we can simplify that to 5 times 2 is 10 times x is 10x. And it's very easy to forget your index. And then on the inside, 2 times 2 is 4 times x is 4x. And that is your final answer for this problem. Um, so I'm going to write that up here. 10x cubed root of 4x. Now let me show you something. If you look at page one, okay, so I have, uh, this is page two right here that we just did, 10x cubed root of 4x. Notice the difference from page one is that this is just, we multiply the two times five. That's all you're doing. It's the only additional step in this section. So this lesson, we've added variables and we've added coefficients. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, solve some of these. So we have seven here. We're gonna multiply it times whatever comes out of this cubed root of y to the fourth. Actually, instead of putting y to the fourth, I'm gonna go ahead and factor out that y. And finding my groups of three. And so we end up with seven times y cubed root of y. So your final answer is seven y cubed root of y. Okay. All right, problem number eight. So I'm going to apply the, um, the exponent to both terms inside the parentheses. So I have times the square root of four cubed x cubed. Okay, so this time, instead of uh, simplifying my four cubed, I'm just gonna write it as four times four times four because this is a square root. So I end up with four times four times four times x times x times x. Okay, and we could have done this on the previous page we had, because the problem's the same except for the coefficient of three right here. Um, but I just wanted you to see what we were actually doing. So I need to find groups of two. So I have this group of two and this group of two with a four and an x left over. So I have three times four times x on the outside and four times x on the inside. And this gives us a final answer of 12x square root 
for us. Okay. okay. Moving on to problem number nine. Now on the outside, we are including not only a coefficient, but a variable. So it's the same as five times X times whatever is factored out of your square root. So we have four times four times four times four times X times X times X times X. And notice that I'm simplifying the steps a little bit here. Um, and so I'm gonna circle my groups of two. And everything will be factored out of the square root. So what we end up with is uh, 5 times x times 4 times 4 times x times x. And so you multiply all of your coefficients together, and then you multiply your variables to together. So 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 4 is 80. x times x times x is x cubed. So 80x cubed. Okay, example 10. We're gonna go ahead and factor these out. This time we have a cubed root. Um, and then 64, so let me factor out 64. We have eight and eight, two and four, two and four, two and two. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you already know that four times four times four is 64, that's pretty much all you have to put into the square root symbol. But if you don't know that, then factoring them all the way down to prime numbers is what's going to get you that answer. So I have, ah, I'm gonna run out of space. And then I'm just going to put these down here. Okay, I ran out of space. All right, here we go. Um, circling groups of three, group of three, group of three. So we're going to pull two times two times a. So we have two times a times two times two times a cubed root, lonely a left inside. And we can simplify this. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. A times A is 8. A squared, cubed root of A. All right. And our last problem, example 11. So we have 10 times b, and then let's factor out 27. And we have the cubed root of three times three times three times this b. So circling my groups of three, that's what my index tells me to do. I end up with 10 times b times 3 with a cube root of b. And so we can simplify that to 30b. 10 times 3 is 30 times b is b, 30b, and cube root of b. And that is our final answer. Okay, so that was part two of uh, lesson 5-5. Parts three and possibly four will be next week. So if you have any questions, let me know, and I hope you all have a great day.